this installment of Good Clinical Professionals, we talk audit readiness with Bruno Gagnon. Hello, my name is Bruno Gagnon. I'm an executive consultant in clinical operations in the biotech and pharma industry. I've been in industry for about 23 years, and uh, I started as a clinical research associate for a big pharma company, and, and in the last seven years, I've been heading up clinical operations departments. Can you describe the audit from the perspective of the site and how the CRAs can help prepare sites for what's coming ahead? So the site inspector, the FDA inspector will show up on time and they will show their badge from, from the FDA and they will usually want to have an opening meeting and they will go over some sort of an agenda. They may say, I'm here for three days or I'm here just for the one day. No, you never know in advance. It depends on the, on the size of the study. After the opening interview, inter interview or like opening meeting, they will usually start with different interviews of the, of the key personnel, like the main study coordinator, the, PI, maybe a sub I, and very often they will spend uh, time you know, on the first day or the first half day going through the regulatory documents, what I call the site, uh, you know, the site file, the investigator site file. After that, they will start going deeper into the details of patient cases, like what they call case histories, what typically we call source documents versus EDC. That's usually how it happens. Usually at the end of each day, they will do a summary of what they're finding so far. And throughout the day, they may request documents. So at the end of the day, they may go through their checklist and they say, oh, I've asked for document number one, two, and three, and I'm missing document number two. Says, Are you working on this? And then the site will confirm, yes, we'll work on this. I may have it tomorrow. What general areas are auditors concerned about and why? So every FDA inspector will focus on patient safety first. So they're going to look at informed consent. They're going to look at adverse event reporting and anything that could actually jeopardize the patient. Also, data integrity is important. It's everything about protocols, uh, protocol compliance. So they will look at a list of protocol deviations. They will look in the case report form to make sure that there were no data transcription error. And they will ensure that like the study, the protocol was followed. Can you discuss the main differences between the FDA inspection and European inspection? So FDA inspections follow really the code of federal regulation. The FDA inspectors, that's how they are trained. They follow the BIMO guide. So there's a checklist that is easily uh, found on their website. Uh, if you go with Health Canada or let's say MHRA in the UK, it's more of a systems audit than simply just reviewing case report forms and let's say regulatory binders. One example that I found striking recently is that if you go to a, an inspection with a let's say European inspector, they may ask you to bring all the documents related to the clinical trial in the one room and they want to have access to this for the entire duration of their inspection. However, FDA typically will require maybe one document at a time, or they will say, well, bring me patients one, five, and nine. But inspectors in Europe will say, bring me all the documents that can be used to reconstruct the story of the clinical trials. So it's a little bit more thorough. So how should CRAs prepare their sites to speak with the auditor or inspector? When CRAs are preparing their sites to, just, you know, to talk with the auditor, what kind of tone should they have when speaking with the auditor? Yeah, it's very important. So preparation is you know, the key of everything. Obviously, if you think about this, they will need to let them know that you know, an audit may be coming, what's the purpose of the audit, and what the types of questions that the FDA may ask. And from a perspective of tone, you always tell your staff or your site staff when that to answer the questions directly. You, know, you answer only about the question that was asked. You don't need to offer additional information. And if you don't know the answer to a question, it's okay to say, I don't know, let me get back to you on this, or this is not part of my role, I need to defer you to a colleague. So as a CRA, how can you help a site if they disagree with audit findings? So if a site disagrees with the audit findings, what can you say or help them to address it? If by any chance the site personnel disagree with some of the findings, it's very important for the CRA to remind their site not to be defensive. So the PI sometimes will have this tendency, they want to justify why they did something. So that's not the right approach. You tell them, you know, the CRA can tell the PI, you know, it's okay to ask questions, it's okay to clarify, but don't argue with the FDA because that's gonna come back and haunt you. ClinOps Toolkit is a platform where clinical operations professionals network and openly exchange ideas. If you're interested in learning more, click on the link in the description below, and I'll see you next time.